welcome guys. Today I wanted to share with you one of the pieces which was a it was a very important piece for me when I was learning guitar. You know, more and more I find teaching and learning myself that it's not about having like the perfect practice regime or even being very consistent or you know making sure that you learn all the different techniques. A lot of the time what lets us really take a massive leap forward in our in our playing ability is just learning one piece that we really love and kind of put everything into and hopefully play for others as well. So this piece that I want to show you today is a piece that was just like that for me. Maybe when I was around 15 years old, I learned this piece, I practiced it like crazy, learned it from memory, played it for everyone who I could, and I know that it improved my playing an, an enormous amount. So I'm gonna I'm gonna show you today, show you the piece, and hopefully hopefully you like it too, and it brings some benefit to you. So it's a simple piece. It's got two sections: so the A section and the B section. 16 bars in each. So if we want to learn it, we can just go four bars at a time. It's in three, four time. It's a typical waltz. The right hand is going to keep one finger per string the whole way through. So the thumb's going to play any, whichever bass note we play, as long as it's either the D, the A, or the E, one of these three bass strings is always going to be played with a thumb. And then we're going to have one finger per string as we, as we often do. So index finger is going to be on the G string, the third string middle finger is going to be on the B string and that is that it, it plays that string and it doesn't play any other string and the ring finger is going to play the high E string so it's going to be one finger per string index middle ring I M A in guitar language and then the thumb which is called P for pulgar in Spanish plays all the bass notes so let's start with the first four bars they have this G major 7th chord. A simple waltz pattern. So for the right hand we play the outer two strings, in this, for, in this case the two E strings, and then the inner two strings, the G and the B string. And then we do the same thing but the thumb moves down to the D string. So that's bar 1, bar 2, bar 3, and bar 4. Add the left hand, bar 1 has the low 3rd fret on the 6th string, and bar 2 has the high 2nd fret. And the fingering that's suggested in the score is actually finger 1 and 3, which is quite unusual. You could also use finger 1 and 2. And as you can hear, the melody are the high notes, which we're playing with the ring finger. The chords in the middle we can play very softly, and it also has this bass line. So we have three very simple parts, and together they make quite an interesting sound. So think of that as the first line of four bars. The next line has this second fret on the A string is a bass note, and while that note is, gets played, we have three melody notes on the high E string. Zero, two, zero. And then the bass note changes and the melody gets inverted. The bass note steps down a semitone to fret one, and the melody, instead of being zero, two, zero, becomes two, zero, two. And that's like a kind of a transitional two bars. And then we go back into a similar pattern to the one we started with. Except we've got finger one and finger two down on string two and string three, and they're going to stay there for a while. So if we have a look at that second line, it's finger two down on the fifth string, and on the high E string, just using the ring finger, zero, two, zero, and then we change the bass note, two, zero, two, and then the open strings, the A string and the E string, and that little chord. And then the D note by itself. For the first time we don't have a high note in the last bar of that line. So if I just run line two again, Then 
Then line three actually has exactly the same melody as line one. Zero, two, zero, two, except underneath there's a different chord. It's going to be an A minor chord, and then a D7 chord, A minor. And when you put that all together, you've got the outside strings, A and E. to the fourth line. The fourth line is quite interesting because we have a moving melody just as we had at the start of the second line. Now we have this melody. So that's six notes. Zero, two, three, two, zero, two. But the chords don't stop. So what we're going to have is the outside strings, five and one. And then we have the top three strings. And then again we've got the outside strings, and then again the top three strings. And instead of thinking it as this, thinking of it as though it was this melody with this accompaniment, which is quite difficult to play, we'll think of it as six individual chords. Chord one, chord two, chord three, chord four, chord 5, and chord 6. And then finger 2 is going to reach down to the 3rd fret of the 6th string, and we have a figure similar to the first two bars, except with no high note in the second bar. So that's line 4. I'll take that again. We've got those 6 chords, and then reaching down for fret 3, outside strings, Then what's going to happen is the first three lines repeat. And instead of playing the fourth line, we have a replacement fourth line, which sounds like this. The first two bars are exactly the same as the original fourth line. And bar three and four use a G chord. So that finger three is going to slide up to the, the high G, third fret on the first string. And finger two is going to move down to the third fret on the sixth string. And we're going to play the outside two strings. And then the thumb just walks down the bass, the bass notes. So the first half of the piece comes twice. Line one, two, three, four. And then line one, two, three. And we can think of it as line five. Comes instead of line four. Then we have the four lines of the second half of the piece. And the change is key, we were in G major, and we start here in C major. So we start with a G7 chord. Same pattern, that outside strings, inside strings. We stay with a G chord, outside strings, inside strings. And then we slide to second position, finger two comes to the third fret, and we play the third fret on the fifth string and the high E string. And now we have a little melody in the middle voice. We've got zero, two, zero on the second string, and then two, zero. So while those two outside notes are ringing, we have that little melody. So we can think of that as line one of the second section. I'll play it again. Bar one, bar two, bar three, So bar three and four are interesting because they have those outside notes and the middle voice plays a little melody. The second line of the B section of the piece, or the second half of the piece, is exactly the same. So you might like to play it a little bit differently, maybe a bit softer as a kind of an echo or make some other kind of changes to the articulation. But that's line one and two of the second half of the piece. Line three and four are quite similar to one another as well. They feature these two string chords. And there's a pattern. I'm going to leave out the bass notes to start with. What we're going to do is we're going to hold down the C sharp, the second fret on the second string, for two bars. And the, the, 
it makes a chord with a note in the first string which changes. So I'm going to keep that finger there, we always play that note, and at the same time I'm going to go 3, 2, 0, 3, 2, 0 on the high E string. That's bar 1 and bar 2. Now at the same time we have a low E bass note in the first bar, in bar 1, and a low A bass note in bar 2. Then in bar 3 we have fret 2 and fret 3, and fret 3 this note doesn't move and all that's going to happen is this finger is going to play, lift off and play again. So we're going to have 2, 0, 2, 2, 0, 2. Now I'm going to add this note back in. And now I'm going to add the bass notes. So the bass notes are going to be D and then A. So when I play the whole of the third line of the second half of the piece, it's going to sound like this. Which brings us to the last line. The last line is very similar. This is the last line of the second section. Same chords for the first two bars. In bar three, we once again go to the D chord, but we stay on that chord. And then we move up. So we move up to the next third. So we go from playing fret two and fret three to playing fret three and fret five. And then in the final bar, we go up to playing fret 5 and fret 7. And then we have two open D strings. And that takes us back to the beginning of the piece. So if I play through just the last line of the second half. And that takes us all the way back to the beginning of the first section. The first section gets played again, except instead of playing line 4, we go straight to line 5, and then it's over. We don't do any repeats. So we go from the beginning, that's line 1, line 2, line 3, and line 4, line 5, sorry. <laughs> Line 5 is the one that goes to the G chord, and that's where the piece ends. I hope that's really helpful for you guys. As I said, it was for me when I was learning guitar. I practiced it like crazy, forgot about everything else, and it's really something I recommend you try at some point or other. Just get stuck in, find a piece that you love. Find a piece that you can play for other people and just really get stuck in, and you'll see how you'll be surprised at how all of your playing improves just by going really deep on one piece. This piece, by the way, is called Carousel. It's by Gerard Montreal, who's a Canadian guitarist, composer. It's from a book called 12 Divertissements, which are easy pieces for guitar. There are loads of other great ones. We're gonna do some lessons on, on some of them too. If you want a score, you can, well, you, can, you can search up Gerard Montreal, 12 Divertissements, and you can buy the printed music, or you could head on over to our Patreon, that's uh, patreon.com forward slash altguitar, and you can get the notes and the tabs and all the other guitar stuff. There's, there's loads of things on there. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do consider subscribing. And if you've enjoyed the lesson, please drop us a like. We really appreciate that. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks so much for watching, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Ciao. Mm -hmm.